Hey, Josh. Howdy. How's it going? Uh, so many meetings. Yeah. The, um, the, I feel like we went through the cycle where in like March, April, there was all the meetings and then people got kind of burned out. <clears throat> and in May and June, the number of meetings dropped and now we're back to five hours of meetings a day. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I know the feeling. My whole, my whole afternoon is just like crammed nonstop. Oh, hey, um, yeah. do you know, you know, Allison Downey from uh, Kubernetes? I do indeed. Yeah. She's moving to London. Is she? She was actually, she was ready to move to London and then she got stuck in New Zealand. Um, I mean, I think, personally, I think she's crazy to move from the only COVID free country in the world <laughs> to the UK, but okay. Yeah. There's job related things. Cool. Do you know when she's uh, when she's actually going to be here? Uh, next month. Oh, okay, perfect. I'll make sure I I'll make sure I reach out to her. Hey, April. Get together with her for a socially distanced tea or coffee or something. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh yeah. It's been. Like we didn't set out to do the pod slash bubble thing. I particularly am really amused with that being concept being called pods for obvious <laughs> reasons. Um, but we've ended up doing it anyway, right? Because um, the only friends that we feel really comfortable seeing in person are the ones who we know are not terrifically social. Yep. Yeah, there's another couple that live in our neighborhood uh, that are like that. They're the only ones that we see. And so every weekend we've been just getting together in one or the other's houses. And, and interestingly enough, playing Pandemic. Because there's not enough that in the real world. <laughs> right, because you're, you're like, if we can't <laughs> defeat it in reality, we'll defeat it on the, uh, on the game table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you, have, have you played any of the Pandemic extension sets? Yeah, so we're actually pay playing Pandemic Legacy, and so we started, right. and we got like halfway through it, um, and then the pandemic started, and then we had to take a break from it, um, and now we're back to finishing the second half of Legacy, but we've played three or four weekends in a row, and mm -hmm. you know, we're still, we're still not done. We still have a few more games to go. Okay. But yeah, it's lots of fun. Hey, Remy. Hi there. Everybody. Like I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, that's what happens when nobody leaves their house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. It is great to see everybody. Uh, you know, for you know, a big part of this whole open source thing is the people, and mm -hmm. I I relish these types of events here where we're we're getting the the band back together a little bit. It's nice. Cool. What's your gig these days? So I'm the newly minted head of open source over at Spotify. So I've been oh, nice. helping to spin up their OSPO. They already had a pretty awesome uh, group of people internally called the FOSS board that's been sort of doing all of the functions of the OSPO that includes a bunch of folks like Lynn Root from PSF and a couple of other like yeah. FOSS stalwarts. So there's a lot of like great culture and tools and stuff here. And I'm just here to sort of help glue it all together nice and turn it yeah are you still over pivotal way last I remember? we got acquired by vmware and in that process i switched from running our kubernetes contributor strategy to um to the open source program office which is a change that i i wanted to make because vmware has loads of people doing kubernetes contributor strategy they didn't need me as one more i'm happy to do community strategy within ospo so that that's what i'm doing so it's and it's been pretty fantastic i love it yeah, awesome. Are you still rocking out with the chaos folks a little bit too? Oh yeah, yep. Just got off a call with them. Like Josh and I were talking about, I was meeting marathons today. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Don. Well, I think we've got uh, the people that we're going to get today. Um, 
there's not much on the agenda, so I, I think people were not excited about showing up. Um, the um, April, are you able to hear at this point? Cool. Okay. Um, I. <clears throat> by the way, um, we are recording. Um, the um, uh, usual uh, thing. This is an official meeting of the CNCF. We're under the CNCF code of conduct. Be nice. Um, and um, then let's get started. Um, so, um, <clears throat> for the minutes, <coughs> I want to do a follow-up on the badge proposal, but Dims is not here. Ping him. I just pinged him. Let's go back to that if he shows up. Um, because we have more follow-up to do on that to make it a real proposal. Um, the one bit was, for anybody who wasn't at, at um, last week's general contributor strategy meeting, the general um, SIG felt that we could actually commit to following up with spot checks of the annual reviews in order to verify badges, which was one of the sort of open questions. Um, the... Um, so, um, and then we'll talk more about it if Dims is able to join, um, if he's not in the room. Um, so, um, let's go over to the leadership documents that Dawn. Yeah. Has. So I would say there are probably not really any changes since um, since last week. So uh, Josh, you signed up for adding something about rotation. And yeah, it's there. Where? Oh, uh, under rotation, best practice for leadership selection. Oh, yeah. Um, I thought, sorry, I thought you were going to add a few sentences about your, your thoughts on rotation. So it says uh, add something here about how rotation leadership adds. Do I have an old version of this? Wait yes, you Let do, me refresh. apparently. Let me refresh. <gasps> there it is. Look at that. Sorry, I looked at this right before, too, and it didn't auto-refresh for some reason. Yeah, well, thank Google you. Docs. Yeah, the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I added a few other minor things here and there. Um, Perfect. Nothing, nothing substantial. Awesome. Uh, so then I think the only piece that we need, so Jennifer, I think you were going to add something about the transition from existing leadership to new governance. I have not added that. Okay. I will work on that. Perfect. Um, so if uh, once that gets added, if people are okay with this, uh, I think what I'll do, I'll just give it another quick once over and then I can uh, just PR it into the, the repo as a resource. Yeah, I mean, I can think of lots of things to add to this, but what's there is a solid initial contact, you know, piece yeah. and then we can just keep adding to it as we go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm a big fan of getting getting enough out there that it's useful for people, and then we can continue to add to it as we need to. I mean, nothing's ever done, right? Cool. Um, okay. Yeah, that's all I have on that. Okay. Um, I added one of the other checklist items there, um, the what is governance document. Um, the, um, um, because that's on the list, and this is just sort of an introduction to our advice on governance. Um, the, um, 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 a lot of this is taken from uh, the chapter that I wrote for the Open Source Way, um, with rearranged and with changes made to make it more specifically applicable to the CNCF. Um, the, um, but one of the questions that comes from that is, um, I, 
do we have any licensing restrictions? Um, because because I did copy and paste some material written by other people as well. Um, it was it was a collaborative effort, and um, the open source way is um, I license CC share alike. Um, so one of my questions is going to be whether or not it's okay for us to have material that's licensed that way in our recommendations. Could the CNCF folks perhaps help advise on? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess if we're okay with that, then yes, then the next thing to do would be to escalate it to CNCF leadership slash legal and make sure that we're not breaking a rule there. Right. I mean, you said you wrote most of it, right? For the. Yeah, it's just the issue of going back and reverting to only the core material that I wrote and only using that so that we can license it however we want would be right. a lot of effort. Um, yeah because um, basically I wrote a draft, um, Brian um, uh, Berenhausen edited it and his contributions are under CC by SA. So gotcha. I would have to basically undo all those edits, which would be painful. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I, my personal philosophy is like, you wrote it clearly it's, you know, up to a certain standard that we're probably all pretty comfortable with. So, um, then I think it's just a question of like having the, the legal check off that we're doing the right thing. Cool. Um, okay, so I will go ahead and escalate that to CNCF and make sure there's no problem with CC by SA. Um, if they're okay with that, then I will just add um, a line at the bottom of that particular file that says some material from mm -hmm. um, the open source way. Yeah. Um, the, um, any other thoughts on that? I, one of the things that I feel is missing here is I need to actually tie in some more information about the other sections of our planned advisory outlines. Um, Cause right now this has roles and paperwork, um, but we need to have stuff on, you know, tie it into leadership, tie it into some of the other documents that we're planning so that it's more of an, uh, an introduction. Um, Okay, I see that probably. Okay, oh, Dim's left some comments on this, which is nice. Cool. Okay, well, if people have other thoughts, um, if people can have anything to contribute to that, obviously, well, we're in our early draft stage. Um, um, please do. Um, otherwise, I will work on tying in the rest of the bits um, of the advisory um, folder um, into that so we have lead-ins to everything um, and then go ahead and submit it um, as a resource PR. Okay, um, so let's look at the rest of content tracking. which would be issue number 37. Um, if people want to flip to that. Um, now,
Hmm. Oh, it's probably to volunteer for role definitions, but if not, I have some material for that. I thought the contributor team was going to pick that one up because it's really similar to the contributor ladder. Yeah. I think it was Paris and team that were going to pick it up. Okay. Yeah, I, th I thought we had some kind of volunteer for that because I remember thinking, okay, I'm not doing that. I'm doing policies and procedures because I have a bunch of material for that and then people add more to it. Um, the um, <clears throat> uh, resource list has actually already started um, with a PR. Um, so we have a few of the things that aren't attributed. Um, how to shut down archive a project. Um, somebody needs to follow up on security issue handling guidelines. The reason why this falls under governance working group is um, picking who handles security issues is very definitely a governance issue. Um, particularly, it becomes a governance issue if you do it badly. So um, the um, um, how to keep your communications open. Um, this would be sort of an advisory. It's particularly an important advisory for projects that are going from being single organization to multi-organization. Um, <coughs> um, and, um, and then one of the other things that we need to think about doing is adding templates for all of the things that we're describing that should go into the new project template. Um, and we haven't even really tackled any of the requirements stuff yet. Feedback on that? Thoughts on that? Anybody want to volunteer to take any one of the unclaimed sections? Quick question um, for the security issue handling guidelines has got in quote, uh, in parentheses SIG security. Is that like is the idea that maybe SIG security should handle that or? <coughs> uh, it's the idea that at least SIG security should be involved. As in whoever's working on this needs to ping them to see if they have advice for projects. Um, you know, ideally it'll turn out that they have a bunch of already written material that we can just point to, um, um, you know, and then confine ourselves to just writing up a thing of, hey, here's how, here's ways you can choose a security committee. Because um, part of it is we have to look over things, you know, advice like, hey, when your project is really small, your security committee will probably also just be the lead maintainers. But as the project gets bigger and more complicated, you're probably gonna need a separate security team. Um, and here's how a bunch of different, here's how some projects handle that. Um, I mean, that's the governance issue that we absolutely can't leave alone. Hopefully, SIG security has material on, now here's how that team should behave. Um, and if they don't already have that, then somebody would need to ask them to actually prepare that. Um, I can volunteer to take the how to shut down an archive and then how to keep comms open. you have like a date by which we're trying to get this all in or is it just like now of course <laughs> i as soon as we can um okay. the um it's really hard to have given the times i try to avoid setting deadlines on things that are not tied to this is true yes external yes. do or die deadlines um yeah as long as we're making progress i mean because among other things Honestly, none of these documents will ever really be finished. 
Um, yes. So, so I mean, our focus should more like we did with the leadership document of, hey, let's get a minimum viable document up that projects can look at because that's still going to be more right. than they have now. Um, and then we can just keep putting pull requests against those to improve them. Okay. Um, <coughs> I, okay. I could I could tackle the charter one. I'll uh, add myself to the security issue handling guidelines one um, and sync with the SIG security folks. And that's Jennifer, just. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah, I don't have my video on. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Cool. Okay. Um. And the resource list is just really a group effort. So basically the resource list is a folders already been created with that for that and several documents in the, the contributor strategy repo. And as you run across external items that were worth looking at for, you know, whichever content you're working on, um, I add links to those. Um, the, um, okay. And I'm putting myself down to coordinate with contributor growth for the role definition, how to do role definitions. And I'm already on there for paperwork. Okay, so that's most of the things. And then we can sort of knock out all this advisory stuff and then we can start on some of the requirements stuff. Um, um, and we're doing it in that order because a lot of the requirement stuff will be like, you need to do this and here's an advisory document on how to do that. The other question I had for you is how important are the templates versus these documents? Because obviously um, all of these documents are going to generate templates. Should we work on getting yeah. a core set of docs and then work on getting a core set of templates or should we do them in parallel? Any thoughts? I'd, I'd say in parallel is fine. I would say do the thing that you f feel like doing at the time. Um, like if you're really hot to do templates and you're going to knock out a bunch of templates and, and, you know, make PRs for those, then do it. Right. And if you feel like writing instead and you want to write a bunch of stuff, then do it. Um, given how much content we've assigned ourselves, it's from my perspective, do the thing that you're actually going to get done. Cool. Sounds good. You know, and so I was saying we're kind of leaving off the requirements stuff, but that's a very soft rule. If you have ideas to write up things for the requirements, particularly some of the requirements that we've had a lot of discussion about already, then don't don't hold back because, oh, I need to do this other document first. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that was content tracking. And of course I didn't take notes for any of that because um, too many screens. Um, are there other, oh, okay. The adding resources page, by the way, is still open as a pull request. So, because apparently we're waiting on Paris to respond to a bunch of corrections. Okay. Um, so that's still pending as a pull request and then we'll have something that we can add stuff to. Um, beyond that, we don't have any new issues. So it's just all this content generation. Uh, if anybody has time to add any notes on what we just discussed regarding the content generation, um, please go ahead. Um, otherwise, do we have any other business? So DIMS, by the way, is definitely not joining us. Um, and so I would rather 
wait and follow up on the badge proposal in places where he can participate, which probably means on Slack. Um, the, um, probably means on, on Slack. Um, it still feels like something that we want to propose. Um, people were positive about it, uh, both in SIG contributor strategy and there was brief conversation about it in the TOC meeting this morning. Um, and people were very interested um, in seeing a final proposal. Um, so um, I do think that we wanna go ahead with that, but it needs a lot of fleshing out. Okay, um, anybody have anything else? None for me. Nope, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks all. No harm in making a meeting shorter um, in <laughs> our meeting days. Um, if you can use the extra half an hour to do a little bit of writing or review of either of those documents. Um, Don, uh, well, wait, we, we're waiting for one bit in that, um, in your document and then you can submit it as a PR, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, bye. And then um, we will get that set up. Cool. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Um, and look for look for conversation in Slack about the batch proposal. Cool. See you all later. Bye, everyone.